thank you. And sometimes uh, all you need is a little nudge from a colleague to achieve amazing things that you've never dreamed about. And then a lot of support your, from your family. And because unexpected things happen, and like we just changed the room from cherry blossom to this big uh, stage. And this is how I get involved with WordPress Playground. Uh, I started working, developing a little application, and then started contributing to WordPress Playground from time to time. So in this talk, I will uh, talk about WordPress Playground, what it is, uh, what you can do with it, and the learnings uh, that I got from Adam, who is leading this uh, open source project. So let's see uh, what WordPress Playground is, and people uh, will understand better seeing this video. I have a lot of screencasts, so it's one click, and you can uh, spin up a WordPress instance running in your browser without servers, no database, everything in your browser. This is possible thanks to uh, WebAssembly and JavaScript. So PHP is running in JavaScript. It's a normal WordPress that we already know, but you can see how much time we saved. Uh, you didn't need to set up a local environment. You didn't need to register anywhere. You just open the website, and it starts running. You are, you are already logged in. So you can start typing, and the cool thing uh, is that, as I said, WordPress Playground runs directly in your browser. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you prefer, but we can improve this description to make it more general. And actually, WordPress Playground runs on any device with JavaScript, which is maybe Node.js in a server, or your laptop, or your mobile phone or tablet. So as I said, you can try it now. Uh, it's playground.wordpress.net, and it will spin up the WordPress instance. But this is just one of the applications. We have more. It's kind of an ecosystem of applications that people is developing on top of it. The key part is PHP WebAssembly, and that's kind of the heart, the core that runs uh, the playground. Around that, we have uh, web API uh, written in JavaScript and Node, and even uh, Ella created a mobile application. So I will showcase all these applications and some of those uh, use cases, because Playground is not just for developers. Yes, normal users can uh, learn, showcase, or test. And you can develop uh, WordPress sites with the Playground and also build and extend the Playground itself. At the end, we will uh, close the talk uh, talking about some future possible applications that we could do. So for the use case of learning WordPress, I would like that you go back on time and uh, remind, remind what was the steps you took, uh, how excited you were about learning new technology, and then maybe the hassle to set up the local environment, installing Docker or MySQL, or whatever the application you are using. So uh, with the playground, learn it's instant, and you can explore all the ecosystem, the plugins and themes. We have the query API. In that URL, you can type theme and the name of a theme, and it will auto-install in that instance. The same for other variables, like a plugin, and you can put it multiple plugins. So at the end, you will have a long URL, that will set up a custom WordPress site with those plugins and themes. Yeah. 
here you can see also we have a settings uh, button where you can change the PHP and WordPress version. By default, uh, the playground uh, runs in a temporary state. So if you refresh all the posts and pages you created or plugins if you installed someone uh, manually, it will be gone. But you can set up uh, permanently the option on, on the settings to keep it there. Or even you can run your WordPress from your computer. Also, you can export the site and import it to continue later. So a little bit uh, how it works under the hood is this is a source code of a C program. And it's compiled with GCC. At the end, we have a bin binary, and we can run it in our computer, right? So with weather assembly, it's the same thing, but it will run in JavaScript. And the compiler is mscripten. So to change the PHP versions, we compile. We have a Docker image that compiles the source code of PHP, generating all the WebAssembly files needed, each one for each PHP version to accept. As I said, we don't need a database because we, if we are using MySQL, we would need to uh, compile it to WebAssembly to use it. So uh, Adam decided to use SQLite and run it uh, directly in PHP. So another use case for learning is uh, learn through writing code directly in the browser and executing PHP in the browser. Uh, here is uh, the, this plugin that creates a blog where you can embed in your website and make a tutorial with a predefined PHP that the user can play and change and execute it and see how it changes the result. Here is a small demo. Let me see. So this is the block, and the users can run that PHP code. Currently, it runs only PHP, plain PHP. And if you need to run uh, WordPress functions, you need to import it, uh, uh, the library. Yeah, so the users can change and see the output of it. So it helps uh, people learning uh, from any device, tablets, iPhones, whatever. For showcase, uh, imagine you have a plugin and you can embed it in your uh, website so the users can try it, your plugin directly. And you are not afraid that they will get in into the server because there is no server. It's ex executing in their laptops. So each user has a different instance. Here is another demo. This is a real use case that people is using. So you can try just from this, from uh, used, and see how it works. For testing, uh, we have the, this website where you can put a link or the number of the pull request and try the code executing in your browser. No need to download the repository or compile it, anything. So it would be handy that it's automatically generated in like a bot, but currently we need to write it in the description. But for testing, people will click it and test your PR. This is another cool application that uh, Alex Kirk created, and it's working in uh, core to help uh, translators to get context. So they will run the plugin that needs to be translated. It will be installed. It will be localized for that uh, language. And then in the website, you can see what's already translated and what's not, and uh, commit 
all the translations that uh, currently is in yellow, and then push it and synchronize it uh, to core. So uh, translators will have all the context because they are seeing the real web page. Yeah, here is uh, synchronizing to core. Another use case is uh, WordPress development. So this is WP now. This is the tiny tool that we've created uh, uh, from my team in WordPress.com. And it was a six-week project, and it runs in the command line interface. So you can install it globally in your machine. And then you can spin up, go to a blog theme or plugin, and then run WP Now Start, and it will run a WordPress instance with uh, that plugin or theme installed. Under the hood, uh, in a home directory, we have all the WP content folder uh, in a custom directory. So uh, it's persistent in your laptop. Another cool application of this same uh, tool is that you can run it in code spaces. And you don't need to set up anything, any file. Like, you can go any uh, GitHub repository that it's a plugin or theme, and then run WP Now Start. Like, install it and run it, WP Now Start. And you will test that repository and play with it, with GitHub code spaces. And we've created this uh, to improve the experience for developers and avoiding installing other third party tools like Docker that are, you need some lessons. And the funny thing is that, uh, for example, Luis Saranth took that uh, application and used it in a different way that we've never thought about. So in a workshop in WordCamp Europe this year, he showed how creating interactive, interactivity um, blocks and define it in the package JSON. How we'll run uh, WordPress scripts and also WP now at the same command and start. So developers just need to jump start and that's it. They don't even need to install it globally, WP now making it much easier, any development. Uh, Daniel, that he's uh, around here, uh, participated uh, in kind of hackathon this year and created uh, with uh, Adam and more people the extension of uh, Visual Studio Code. It was the first development to run it locally, and now it's the user interface of WP Now. So it runs under the hood the same code. You can install it. It's, if you are using Visual Studio Code, go to extensions, search for WordPress Playground, install it, and you will have a, an icon on the left. And if you open a plugin theme or a whole WordPress site, um, you can click on the WordPress icon, and then click Start Server, and it will automatically start the WordPress instance. So as I said, it, it's equivalent to running WP Now Start, but it's the user interface. And you can change the PHP version uh, and WordPress version, so you can test your plugin or theme in different environments. For building, I want I mean, is extending the playground itself in uh, different ways. So, because you can run it in any JavaScript uh, device, in any device that runs JavaScript, you can use playground as a mobile app framework. Like, it would be, for example, React Native or uh, Ionic. So, Ella created uh, this application, uh, it's block notes, 
and it's running a WordPress instance in your mobile phone as a native application. The thing is, uh, it saves every page or every node uh, as a local file, and it's synchronized with the iCloud. So it's just uh, kind of an iframe that loads HTML and JavaScript for locally, and then auto installs some plugin. That's what I imagine. Like I don't have the details, but auto installs a plugin that uh, changes the UI of WordPress to look at, like hiding all the options, the user options, and the front end, making showing only the admin side. So you can experience the. Uh, all the blocks, and you can move those nodes to different folders. Here we can see that the nodes are saved in your local phone and synchronized with iCloud. So we can extend it in different ways. We, one of those are uh, using the JavaScript API. And it would be like uh, all the playground logic lives in N NPM packages, and you can install it in your project, import it. But this is like really uh, complicated way to extend. But you, you have all the freedom, right? So a better way is using blueprints. And this avoids you uh, the hassle to code in like uh, line by line all the logic and define it as a JSON object. And uh, we have steps where you can define uh, installing a plugin, installing a theme, and run some PHP logic if you need. And even you can access the virtual file system. These blueprints, you can run it using the JavaScript API or in the same website, playgroundwordpress.net, you can add the hash and the JSON uh, of the blueprint in the same URL. And it will get it and run step by step. So the th three uh, ways to extend WordPress Playground is using the query API, just adding the theme or plugin in the URL, and it will autoload that. So it's really easy. Um, the blueprints, that it's the JSON object, defining a step by step, some predefined uh, logic, or the JavaScript API. So WordPress Playground is powered by WebAssembly. But you don't need to code in WebAssembly. We've seen that you just need a little, maybe changing the URL, or uh, creating some blueprint, or using JavaScript. So don't be afraid that, oh, I'm not a WebAssembly developer. I will not be able to extend it. Not at all. So the last section is the future. And the Playground has vision and roadmaps. But uh, some of the vision points that I talked before, this is my personal view, like my experience and uh, what I can see that it's missing or I would like if I would have a magic wand. And this is in the future, but already exists because one person developed a Chrome extension that changed the URL, uh, allowing people uh, to try any plugin on theme. So if you install this Chrome extension, uh, you can go to the plugins or theme directory and try anything. So, because I wonder how you try plugins. Maybe you install it in production. You, maybe you create a staging site. But now you can go to the directory and run it. I guess that maybe this will be incorporated in core and you will not need a Chrome extension to do it. So for themes, the same. You pick one, and little button appears, 
click there, and that's it. You try the theme. So everybody is welcome uh, to develop, but uh, you can share your feedback and uh, add new ideas or uh, report some bugs. So here, uh, Elliot added an idea, and this week I started to create a kind of prototype to make it easier to write blueprints. So I created a text editor kind of where you can run the JSON object and it will reload the iframe automatically to represent all you need. So you, we can see that we have a login step here, for example, and if you change the username, then the iframe is not logged. And if you put the right username, you are logged in automatically. So it's really easy to do. Like This is like 30 lines of plain HTML and JavaScript. That's it. Uh, I would like to keep working on this, and I imagine this being a kind of scratch thing that you can drag and drop uh, blocks, so people that it's afraid of writing JSON uh, can play it and create uh, things with uh, WordPress Playground. Another uh, vision that I, I have is uh, probably we will have a kind of complete ID in the browser where you can write the code, access the virtual file system of WebAssembly, and change the PHP code. And that will be your local environment, but it will be running in, in your local, but kind of remote in the browser. Another would be like we have the pull request previewer for Gutenberg, but I imagine that we will create a bot that you will preview any pull request or any repository from WordPress, your project. Or one last uh, application, possible application, would be running end-to-end -end testing in uh, GitHub Actions, for example, because uh, it's easy. And you will not need to run a Docker with a database. It's just kind of command, and that's it. So I see that WordPress Playground is an emerging ecosystem of new tools and applications. And there are a ton of opportunity to create new things. So. I explained all these different uh, applications that currently exist. But these are just pieces that you can use. And I hope that we will have fun building the future playground together. If you are interested, you can join the Slack channel, Meta Playground, in the Make Slack. And here are the repositories of WordPress Playground and Playground Tools. Thank you. If anybody uh, have a question, happy to answer here or later uh, in the hall. So looking at this, one of the use cases that jumps out to me most, apart from the uh, ease of onboarding folks at contributor days with this to the project, is also there's a lot of schools uh, with middle school students, high school students that use Chromebooks that up to this point have been able to do any sort of local WordPress development without installing Linux in Chrome OS. And all of a sudden, this is going to open up a lot more possibility of learning WordPress and software development earlier in the cycle instead of other uh, platforms. So I'm just really excited to see how this is going to grow and mature and how it's going to integrate with like the core training team uh, working up lesson plans for this in the educational system. No real question, just a comment, and that sounds super cool. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I totally agree. And thank you for your uh, question and comment. That, uh, yeah, this enable uh, anybody to run WordPress. And you don't need a machine that is uh, powerful enough to run Docker or any other local environment. You can try it instantly just accessing a website. So, yeah, like you cannot develop right now uh, from your phone or your uh, iPad. But with Playground, you can. And that's what's changing, uh, making WordPress more accessible to more people. Thanks for all this work. This is awesome. Uh, the Blueprints API in particular looks really cool and really powerful. I'm curious if you can talk a little bit more about what sort of things you can control through that and like how is that actually implemented? Is that something that we could use those same Blueprints on like full standard provisioned WordPress instances? Uh, as like a, a standard format for creating new WordPress sites. So the question is about Blueprints. And uh, yeah, the idea of Blueprints is uh, defining a logic that will ex be executed uh, before starting the WordPress site. So uh, you can uh, make it repos repro reproduce the same behavior each time, right? Um, but it, the possibilities are endless. Like, uh, for example, the mobile application that Ella created probably it's running a, a blueprint saying, hey, install this plugin that it's in this directory, and that plugin actually transform all the WordPress to make it look uh, like a mobile application. I can see like it's uh, writing uh, a Docker file definition, um, but easier, right? Because it's just JSON, and the thing is that each step is um, defined. So uh, you can add new steps and create a pull request to WordPress Playground. Like I need to change something that it's not already doesn't exist. So feel free to create that step, and the rest of the community will enjoy it. Hi. That's uh, pretty awesome. Um, you talked about with the mobile app framework type thing, and you compared it to Ionic. How does that work? Is it like a, like a web view with WordPress running in like a browser type instance, or how does it compare to like Ionic for that? Um, so you mentioned Ionic, which like the mobile app framework. Um, so how does and you showed the example of the app that Ella built. Um, how does how does that work? Is that like a, a web view that's running, or is it something else more native? Yep. So uh, I, I talked this week with Ella about the mobile application, and thank you for the question. And uh, from my understanding, the application runs uh, offline. So it, it means it's loading the HTML, like it's loading an iframe, and that iframe has HTML and JavaScript to run the WordPress playground like you would be accessing internet, but it's just in the phone. And that's the way she loads it, and I guess, yeah, that she's using uh, blueprints to run the plugin. But yeah, mainly it loads uh, an HTML, it's an iframe that loads an HTML that lives inside the phone, so you can access it offline. I answered the question? Thank you. Okay, there are no more questions. Thank you everyone for coming and your time.